The Zoogeneticus tequila, or tequila split fin, is one of the more popular Gudeid species in the aquarium trade. While its body has a brownish gray color, what makes this fish stunning is its bright orange tail. So let's dive in and learn a little bit more about this awesome Gudeid species. The tequila split fin is native to the state of Jalisco in Mexico, where it was native to the Rio Teochitlan River. Until recently, this fish was extinct in the wild, but efforts have been made to reintroduce this fish into the Teochitlan Springs. I recently saw a presentation on this effort by Pat Hartman at the ALA convention back in May, and it was really nice to see. The decline of this species was driven by drought and the invasion of their habitat by non-native species. Thankfully, we've been able to keep this beautiful fish alive in the hobby through the many populations that are kept in the aquarium trade. So let's go ahead and talk about how to take care of this fish. Size-wise, this fish will top out at about two and a half inches long. It's recommended by the Gadead Working Group to keep this fish in a 29 gallon tank, but I really do like keeping them better in a 29 gallon. I currently have mine in a planted 29 gallon and they've done quite well for me. I found these fish to be quite hardy and they really do well with just some basic care requirements. I currently run my 29 gallon with just a sponge filter and some plants, which seems to work quite well. I have found that these fish will readily accept a wide variety of food from flake, small pellets, live and frozen. I've really not found anything that these fish will not eat. One thing you will need to keep in mind with caring for these fish is temperature. These fish prefer cooler water below 75 degrees and will start to fall apart if sustained temperatures are above that. I actually had an AC issue this year in the fish barn and unfortunately lost a few individuals before I was able to fix the problem. I've really found that a temperature between 70 to 72 degrees is really good for them. These fish do like fairly hard water and a higher pH level. The fish barn currently has a pH range that ranges from 7.8 to 8.0. While these fish are not as aggressive as some of the other Gudeid species, I would highly recommend keeping them in a species only tank due to their endangered status and potential aggression. I've not witnessed a ton of fighting amongst the males like I've seen with other species, but I would provide some hiding places for the less dominant males to hide in. While I do recommend keeping these fish in a species only tank, if you are looking to have them with other fish, I do have a couple of recommendations. In the past, I've kept these fish with a Xiphophorus mulinch or Highland Swordtail, which seems to tolerate the same water conditions and temperatures that the Tequila Goodyeats prefer. I wouldn't see any issues with keeping this fish with any of the other northern swordtails like the mulinch. In the past, I've also kept other Gudead species with rainbow fish, but I would only recommend this in a tank that's 40 gallons or larger. Also, I would not recommend keeping them with any other Gudead species to avoid hybridization. Sexing your tequila Gudeads is actually quite simple. The males will have an orange tail fin and be a little bit smaller than the females. Unlike guppies, platies, and other pacillid live bearers, the male Gudeads do not have a gonopodium, but instead have a small notch in their anal fin that they use to inseminate the female. While these fish do give birth to live young, like the bacillids, the process is a little bit different. The gestation period for your tequila Gudeads is about 60 days, and the females will give birth to fewer fry which are also larger in size. Most of the time the fry number less than 10. One interesting fact about Gudeads is that the fry are attached to the mother with an umbilical cord type structure called a trophy tie which you can see an example of here in this clip. I found the tequila Gudeads to be good parents and not be aggressive fry eaters and the fry will readily take ground up flake food and any other appropriately sized foods. One thing that I do like to cover in these care guides when speaking about the rare type fish is where you can actually find them and buy them. The tequila goodyids are one of the more readily available species, so you should have some reasonable luck finding them. Because they produce fewer fry, you really won't see them in a big box store. You might find them on the LFS depending on your area and if they're supported by a local breeder. If you are willing to receive shipped fish, I've regularly seen them in Aquabid, and you can also try your luck at the local fish club and American Live Bear Conventions as well. If you click on the card above, it'll take you to a video where I tell you how I find the rare live bears that I keep in the fish barn. As with any good ad species, be sure to keep all the location information so that you can pass this on to other hobbyists and avoid hybridization issues. So I hope you enjoyed today taking a look at one of my favorite good species. If you want to learn more about other good species, I'll go ahead and put a card here at the end of the video with care guides to those other species. I'll also put a link in the description of this video from the Gadead Working Group where you can find even more information on this Gadead as well as other species. So with that, stay safe, stay
stay fishy, and I'll catch you on the next video.